Yeah, Radiant Reflections. This is season four, episode seven. seven. Um, we're just going to be transparent. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this is take two. Yesterday, we sat at this very uh, newly created mobile video rig and recorded for two hours. We did, uh, yeah, yeah, we shot two episodes yesterday. And we got done and we discovered, I discovered, uh, there was no audio. So we had video, but it was just, uh, yeah, it would have been an interesting ep episodes. Um, <laughs> you know what we could have done though? Just throw it out what, there. Well, <laughs> here's what we should do. If Haley, I'm talking to you here. You can leave this in there though, whatever. Cause I think maybe people would dig this. We should, we should have her post like a clip. Uh huh of us without the audio yeah. but then and then people do we do like some sort of a contest have you ever watched any of those bad lip reading videos oh they're so funny i love the ones where they turn it into a song about star wars yeah those are <laughs> or my, it's star wars my stick and is they better do. than bacon yeah. uh, that's, that's just that's so good so we should we should do a bad lip reading contest for radiant reflection josh and jb and then whoever wins who would maybe, win it? Maybe that? we have them on the on an episode. If or you weren't on it, you would win at that. Uh, it would, would be win. fun. Yeah, it would be it, fun to do. That is right up your alley, John. So <laughs> I do. I do like those. Uh, so I don't know, Haley. There's an idea for you. Yeah, marketing Just, uh, idea. Yeah. Well, for yeah. those that may not be aware, season four of Radiant Reflections, we are going through practicing the way uh, John Mark's Com uh, John Mark Comer's book. Um, and the idea is to be with Jesus, become like him and do as he did. And right now we're not even a quarter of the way through the book and that, that first third be with Jesus. That's the topic that we're discussing. And this is book club style. So we're hoping that you listeners and viewers are going through the book with us each mm -hmm. week, just reading a few pages. As you can see, we are, we are just, I mean, at a lightning fast pace page 46 today that's right <laughs> and this is episode seven so yeah i i would guess we're probably at 25 episodes and we'll be we'll be done think, with this well, okay book. maybe not i don't know well we'll, we'll be see. by the time we're done if we track about the same as we did yesterday when we had these episodes yeah. by the time we're done with the next episode yeah so episode eight yeah. will be a roughly a third of the way through the so book 24 so and there's three yeah 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 so it could be yeah, and, and uh, we always want to tell you uh, our goal for this season of Radiant Reflections is for you to just begin the process of developing a rule of life, uh, whatever that looks like for you. Um, you're going to hear a bunch of ideas that Josh and I have and things that we do. Uh, you'll hear things from John Mark. You'll read things in the book from John Mark. Uh, but that's something that you and God need to develop together. Um, but we want you to begin moving in that direction. That's the goal of this season is in some way um, looking at a rule of life. So no, it's yeah. good. All right, Josh, let's jump right in. Uh, the heading on page 46. Are we gonna just, we're just going to skip the coffee today. Well, we, cause we already, I mean, we already know all the notes. Here's the thing. Let's just tell them what we're drinking, but we, we do already know. Uh, yes. We, we definitely already know. This is Sensangat. Um, from Olia Coffee, the Tengan, Tengan uh, region of Sumatra. It's an anaerobic wet hauled process and the tasting notes, uh, and Josh and I both got half points yesterday. Yes. Um, orange, I, I had said grapefruit. Uh, the st uh, second one was stone fruit, Josh said, said plum. plum. So that was a oh. that was point for sure. In fact, you should get a whole point uh. because I mean, it is a stone fruit. Um, berries and brown sugar. So it, we agreed yesterday. We're probably not as stoked about it today just because we also had a battery problem. I had to run to the studio. So the coffee is, it's tepid. Is that the yeah, right word? Well, and I will say like it's even, good, even, yeah, it is, it is still a very tasty cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Yesterday when I took that first sip, mm -hmm. it was a, a very, I mean, the whole cup of coffee was pleasant, mm -hmm. but that very first sip was like, Oh yeah, this is something uh, something special. Really fantastic. And again, this uh, Sensangat from Sumatra is from Corvus Roasters out of Denver, and uh, Corvus never fails. Mm. I mean, they they always uh, bring great coffee. So no, it's and they always stuff. have really weird stuff. You know, <laughs> just like wet hauled anaerobic. What is that? You know, so. But anyway, but it's good coffee. It that's is good. What, coffee. That's what we know. Yeah. And you know what I was thinking, Josh, 
since we are just jumping right in, we need to do another coffee event. We should do another coffee. I, event. I was looking just, on my phone just, just for fun and like, yeah, just, just for fun. Out. But I was looking on my phone and I think Haley took a, I don't know if you saw some of these pictures. I did. did you, oh, she took a bunch of really awesome pictures that were like from a real camera. Um, yeah. So we're just sitting here on the podcast, looking at pictures, just so you know, listeners, yeah. viewers. Uh, but she took a bunch of really cool pictures of us making coffee from that last event dude even skylar there's some stuff with skylar Coblen. yeah which here. that that'll be a little bit of a bummer because right obviously there. he won't he won't be uh yeah won't, won't be here for the next one we get chad well, uh, let's look at the calendar yeah we'll get something, something before on, christmas uh, something on the books maybe something in november yeah because we are grateful for coffee oh man it's so good it's so good yeah this is this is calming calming my uh anxious presence this morning Josh will tell you, I was uh, running around kind of crazy, <laughs> which I tend to do when technical things don't work. Um, well, and to be fair, like you, you have, you have a pretty busy schedule for, so for you to have to come and do this again, that, that yeah. puts a little bit of a, puts I, a little bit of pressure on. I was feeling that more for you, Josh. You're no, I'm no busier than <clears> you <throat> and you had to do it again and it was my fault. So I was just like, Ugh. yeah. I hate that stuff happens. I hate that. I appreciate the grace. Stuff happens. I appreciate the grace. <laughs> I, I shot and filmed I, some of, some of you guys know, some don't, I, I shoot and film or I, I shoot and produce uh, the podcast for the GLR called uh, spirit anointed leadership with uh, Dr. Chris Conrad, Reverend, Dr. Reverend, Dr. Dr. Reverend. He does not like that. No, he does not allow us to put doctor in his lower third title. Yeah. I appreciate that. He is just, he's such a cool guy. At any rate, uh, and we were shooting some really important episodes at a church, a Wesleyan church in Allendale. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Life it's probably live stream, live stream, big yeah. church, mm -hmm. really cool facility. Mm -hmm. Old, like it was an old high school building. Um, and four out of like 12 of those episodes, first time in over a year of doing this, we had no audio. So I immediately invested in wired equipment because this was a wireless thing and i'm like oh. i'm done with this i'm done with wireless <laughs> stuff i want a cable that just it's plugged plugs in, it's in. there's go. no syncing and so so this is yeah. one of the, this is one of the reasons why i think you know sunday during the message i i made a comment i don't remember which service but i about how i'd rather do a wedding than a funeral because mm. i feel like there's more weight to a funeral some of that stems from one of the first funerals that I was connected with here at the church, and I didn't officiate at the funeral, I ran sound. This was oh, when our oh board boy. was a lot simpler. Oh boy. And the family had a <clears throat> cousin, niece, nephew, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Some family member came in from out of town to speak at the funeral. And this was really like, they stressed the important, like this is essentially the focal point of the funeral. Oh, no. And they had asked, uh, hey, can we record this? You know, we didn't normally do this. Right. Can we record this? Yeah. I asked, I mean, at the time, Steve, I asked Steve, hey, how do we do this? He yes. showed me how to do this. Yes. Uh, so then I'm, I'm good to go. And I'm, I'm back there running sound. This family member starts speaking. They got about halfway through and I had this, oh, I never pushed record. <laughs> Oh no. oh no did you did you stop him and so, him start over no. i didn't okay but but afterwards now i have to go have the conversation tail between my legs <laughs> with this family of like the thing you told me here's here's the the the, the cd you know with the recording <laughs> of your service um i forgot to push record until about halfway through and oh you could just tell like I don't know if I've ever seen so much disappointment in somebody's <laughs> face. Because again, this was like this person traveled to speak these things about the deceased, and this was the 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 highlight of the of the whole service. Josh, you're making me feel better. And I I totally screwed it up. Oof. I was like, oh. Yeah. So I think that uh, that scarred me a little bit. So yeah. with funerals, it's like my first funeral as a pastor was my for my grandpa. That's tough. That's heavy. It was heavy. It was tough. It was, it was, it was a tough one. Dang. Yeah. I don't like, like doing funerals. baptism by fire. Yeah, it was. I was a young guy. Um, so you know what? We can do it because we're 10 minutes in. Let's do what uh, you did yesterday. Okay. For the skippers. Okay. The All right. Skippers. Yeah. So coffee, coffee. Let's talk for coffee for a few Here, more minutes. We're talking JB. for some coffee. Yep. Uh, anaerobic. Uh, 
Yep, the washed hold, the wet hold, the super duper from Alua coffee. coffee. Um, yeah, it's a, a unique five day drying process. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. All right, because yeah. we know some of you, some of the people skip over all the coffee talk. Yeah. And, These uh, are the Folgers people. We're going to call you what you are. Yeah, they just uh, they want to get to all the all the serious business and mm-hmm. not enjoy life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're, <laughs> <laughs> if that's you, don't take offense. So but we're gonna we're gonna do something right here. Right um, for those of you that listen to the entire thing, coffee talk and all, I want and you audio. to shoot a mm-hmm. yeah. I want you to shoot a uh, an email to Josh J O S H at the Radiant Life dot Church. Josh, the reading life dot church, uh, in the subject, put coffee talk and in the, in the body of the email, just put your name in case it's not like, you know, if your email address is, you know, wackadoo 47 yeah. kind of thing. Right. And mailing address. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Mailing oh, address. that's good. That's good. I'm glad maybe that's why yesterday's didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> because- We're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh and then i will i will put you in a a drawing and i will send you a bag of coffee from a roaster of your choice that we've referenced yes um here and on the podcast so whether many. it's corvus or yes. or uh cova yeah uh, heart, heart uh, upper uh, proud left. mary upper left i still haven't cracked yep. open my bag of upper left i finished my proud mary i'm Ooh. i've got maybe one Ooh. dose left of my stuff from heart so good. um yeah, it's really good. It's spectacular. So, I haven't even gotten any of mine out yet because I had some other stuff I needed to cycle through. But we will say we did want to qualify this. Please don't pick like a savage geisha from Corvus that's eighty dollars for a hundred grams. In fact, we have uh, a yeah, yeah. So I mean, somewhere like the twenty-five to thirty dollar range. Yeah, uh, but which I will get you a beautiful bag of coffee. Yeah, I, I will, mean, I will personally buy you a bag of coffee of your choice. The 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 bean you want, the the yeah. roaster you want. Yeah. Um, Again, just shoot your your name with the subject coffee yeah. talk and a Josh, mailing address and a mailing address to yeah. Josh at the Radiant Life dot Church. Yeah, because we appreciate you guys hanging with us for all yeah. the random dorky, stuff uh, at the beginning. Yeah, yeah I'm so, a coffee dork. I'm not. I'm not afraid to admit it. Haley, when you when you do this, make sure like if you do chapters, put the next chapter like after mm-hmm. all this. That way, the skippers. Yeah. <laughs> you maybe call that first chapter coffee talk so that they can literally, oh. yeah, we'll get them. We'll get them. You know, who's going to win this? My prediction. Uh, I think it's going to be Devo, but I mean, it's going to be a drawing though. I mean, cause it'll be like raffle style. True. I have an app on my phone. I, that I just bet does it's like, going to be Mr. Uh, Chris Tallman. Oh, he's, he's deadly serious about coffee too. He, he and I and Chad have a text thread that we uh, talk coffee pretty regularly. Also, regularly. he's a, he's an IT guy. So he could probably hack yes. into the he raffle could. app that I use on my phone I bet he could. and rig it. Yeah. He's a wizard. That's uh, now, now maybe I should do like physical, like draw a name out of a hat kind of a thing. Not that I don't want Chris to win, but Chris now I'm, great now guy. I'm a little paranoid about that. <laughs> it's going to be good the the hacking of my the hacking of my phone so they're listening anyways right. but page 46 uh practicing the way um and the heading is i look at him he looks at me and we are happy and remember this is all under the main heading of being with jesus as the single most important thing um priority like the priority josh what's sticking out on page 46 uh, it's 46 and, and you hit on this really well and uh in one of our last episodes but in that first section, when he, he uses that line, I look at him, he looks at me, and we are happy. Uh, I think that's a throwback to the idea of joy. Mm-hmm. But again, go with the Jim Wilder definition of joy is the sparkle I see in somebody's eye that communicates mm-hmm. to me they are happy to be with me. Mm-hmm. So I think when you know we often, uh, I think we struggle sometimes to accept the fact that, some of us struggle to accept the fact that God loves us. Mm-hmm. Right, Our image of God is know, skewed. Yeah. All right. We 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 have this idea of him that's uh I don't know if he could love me. I know mm-hmm. what I've done. I know who I am yeah. in a sense. Yeah. And we don't think he can love us. I think we but even for those of us that can can come to terms with the, this idea that God loves us, I think we could still struggle to uh really come to terms with the idea that that God likes us. Mm. Uh, that God that God desires to be with us. Mm-hmm. He's not just putting up with us, right? You know, like uh, I guess you know. Here's uh, Josh again. Yeah, like yeah. I get you know he he surrendered to my son. I guess I'll you know. <laughs> no, I, 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 he, there's there's delight. Yeah, uh, you know the father delights in being with us. 
in in knowing us and and being known he he is a again it's one of the things that sets you know yahweh apart from all of the pagan mm-hmm. gods that is, mm-hmm. is he's he's personal he wants to be known by and not just feared by mm-hmm. uh, the people that he not appeased in. yeah all the other pagan gods and their worship structures are about appeasement mm. and about earning you know um gods of nature are all about sacrificing in order to get rain for crops etc mm. etc sun um all of these are to pacify this god who controls something that you need to live and jesus and god of the bible is just not this way mm. it's just not this uh way. years ago years ago I, I think i have this on dvd uh rob bell did a teaching called mm. the gods aren't angry mm. have you ever seen have you ever seen i that haven't one? but okay. i mean i numas got the numas were yeah so i mean good. he had so much he's a brilliant communicator yes I mean, he it's, is I, I was departed from orthodoxy. Uh, yeah, you know, but. he has a podcast now that I listen to every once in a while, Rob Bell and um, Ronald Rollheiser, who's someone I greatly respect. Probably one of the top three books I've ever read was written by Father Ronald Rollheiser. But they are both, I mean, as I, you listen to the podcast, the, the common vein is universalism. Mm-hmm. You, you really sense. Which, and that was kind of, you know, with Love Wins. Yeah, exactly. You know, Rob, but that was kind of a, a in a sense, a yeah. departure. Yeah, I mean, he was already probably in that space, but that yeah. was one of the things that brought it to the forefront. Mm-hmm. But he's a brilliant, brilliant yeah. communicator. And I do believe he loves Jesus. I know that Ronald Rollheiser does too. Um, I think Josh and I would say unequivocally, we, we don't believe universalism is a true. I wish it was true. I do too. Oh my gosh, do I wish it was true. And, <laughs> and if it's not, then you hope for annihilationism. Yes, <laughs> which... <laughs> Which you can actually make an, a decent case for, I think. You, it's like one scripture for ECT <laughs> and like 120 plus for annihilationism. So I lean towards personally. I don't, can I get fired? I might get fired for this if I say it was a I don't think lean. so. Yeah, Ryan's cool. He's he's pretty so. open. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, I lean towards that. Okay. I I grew up ECT, hard complementarian. Well, I never heard. Okay, it wasn't until, I mean, probably within the last, really, I would say Preston. it's not until we studied, um, do you remember the series we did on death and dying mm-hmm. for season one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Was and that then season one? Of our, one? our best uh, yeah. episodes with uh, yeah, Pat, with, right? With Pat and, and Liz. Oh, man, he spoke so prophetically. But we we talked about heaven and hell, and I think it was in, in doing mm-hmm. research for those episodes. Mm-hmm. That was really the first exposure I had to annihilationism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. And the, and since then, it's come up. We we teach, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in previous, the last two years in the Institute, we've taught the doctrine of eternity, and we try to expose them to a variety of, of yeah. schools of thought mm-hmm. and not just tell, no, this is with it right um and so we talk about an annihilationism chris yeah. kidd and i one of our elders yeah. uh we taught and we did a, a a mock debate like good cop bad cop well so so one of the assignments that they had in that semester for the institute was a, a debate we would assign them a doctrine oh and they would have to do a debate to demonstrate the format chris mm. and i debated uh, ect versus annihilationism mm. so so it's yeah there's a, it's got a pretty solid case <laughs> it, it does it, it really does but so we're not talking about anni- anni- no that's uh not this podcast <laughs> uh yeah um wow how did we even get there i don't know i don't know it's okay we we're talking about joy right that uh <clears throat> oh the image of god yeah, we, we oh. started by talking about false image, you know, having a false image of God where, you know, he's this guy holding a handful of. Uh, he's got some lightning bolts. Yeah, lightning bolts. It's it's really, and it's, I mean, a whole other conversation is is post enlightenment thinking and how much Greek mythology has affected our perceptions mm-hmm. of, of God himself, even our interpretations of the Bible, uh, post enlightenment. And yeah, very, very interesting stuff. Um, yeah, page 47, Josh. Um, I love that uh, quote from the Eastern Orthodox writer Callistos Katafigiotis. That's my best pronunciation. Say that three times fast. Yeah. Uh, the most important thing that happens between God and the human soul is to love and to be loved. It's beautiful. Uh, and then further down there, we could be deceived into thinking of abiding as no more than mental hygiene for the prefrontal cortex, the Christianized version of think happy thoughts. Mm. And while the curation of our consciousness toward the good, beautiful, and true is vital to our formation, abiding is not just about our thought lives or even our emotional lives. 
It's about a level of withness to Jesus that goes beyond our thoughts and feelings. It's about love. Um, yeah, just a beautiful way of describing that. And then he gets into kind of the, the in a sense, the practice is, is mm-hmm. that idea of contemplation. Mm-hmm. It's looking at God, looking at you. Yeah. Love. And we are happy. Page uh, 48, Josh. Uh, 48 in that first paragraph. Yeah. I think he's got an important truth. He says, we become like what we gaze at. Mm. Right. And this is true. Uh, you know, one of the themes that he he has in this book is, you know, we're all being formed. Mm-hmm. Right? So we're all looking at something. Yeah. And whatever we're looking at, that is what we will become like. Yes. Again, we've, we've referenced it before, that idea of like, hey, show me your friends. I'll show you who you're going to be oh, in, yeah. the, in the near future. The data proves um, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, bringing a, a, the scripture like Hebrews 12, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Mm. So, I mean, scripture is calling us to this thing. Like, no, yeah. this is who you're supposed to look at. Yeah. The author and perfecter of our faith. And, and that faith is perfected. As we gaze at Jesus, yeah, it's very so, cyclical because we 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 become like mm-hmm. what we gaze at. I think he he highlights that mm. uh, truth uh, really importantly here. And we've so. talked about this a number of times, Josh, just about the difference when you encounter people that are in in late stages of life. You know, let's say above eighty, in even in the nineties, like there's a couple of categories of those those kinds of people. You know, you'll find people that are close to the end of life that are just bitter and hard and grumpy Mm. and angry right um and i've noticed one of the one of the characteristics of folks in that category they don't have a lot of patience and tolerance for children Mm. they seem to have a disdain for children which is uh, and then on the other side of that you have people who you know it's like they're so full of joy the sparkle in their eye they're always Mm. glad to be with you whether it's a child whether uh the difference in those two people and i think it it's it's that mold right Mm. they've been set into a mold of and they've become what they've set that you know set themselves into they've been shaped by that so um if you want to be a person of love uh, you have to look at the one who is love. Mm-hmm. God is love. Mm-hmm. And, and that that changes. Uh, I love, I mean, just the previous page, I was thinking about this uh, in reference, uh, not to be too sappy here, but in reference to my wife. Mm. As I experience the love of God, I love her more. Mm. And I become more loving toward her mm-hmm. because of his love for me. Um, and I see that truth in my life. It is not, I am not the source, right? Like I'm not, you're not, you're not deciding to be more loving. Like, Oh, I should really work on being more loving. It is so So. organic. It is so natural that as you experience, truly experience the love of God, it can't be contained. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it just comes out. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't want to go back, but yeah, no, it was, uh, one of the speakers. I don't remember which one at the pastor's conference we were at in Portland. And he used that kind of a a summary of some of this, but he says that we are loved into loving. It's previous page. That's what it says. Yeah. Well, I mean, what page were you on? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, loved into loving, um, was Callistos is the love. No, 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 no. Where is it? I mean, he's he hits on it? a little bit of it in the middle of forty eight. That's where I wrote it. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Margins. My mistake. Go. That that's so, where we're at, Josh. Forty eight. Yeah. yeah, but it is. You know, Scripture tells us in First John mm-hmm. that you know we didn't initiate this. God initiates mm-hmm. this. Like He always takes the first step. Yeah. Right. And and the only way we know what love is, the only way that we are empowered to love, mm-hmm. is through. God, mm-hmm. right? He, he's the model of love, the embodiment of love, uh, and it is Holy Spirit in us that empowers us mm. to love. Uh, so yeah, the more that we, we sit with him, it, 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 it creates that, like you said, that organic response mm-hmm. is you, you almost can't help it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I love that, that, uh, first sentence of the last paragraph on 48, um, <laughs> as a guy who had been steeped in information style faith, for many years as a general rule we become more loving by experiencing love not by hearing about it in a lecture or reading about it in a book um and i think yesterday in the podcast we talked about that in in my own context with worship leading 
uh, I've learned that, man, a worship degree is fantastic. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's great. If you feel called to lead worship, go get a degree, you know, learn your music theory. Definitely do that. I know, uh, what is it? What, what's the Spanish word for small? Poquito. Poquito, that's it. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just a little bit. Um, but ultimately, learning to lead worship is by experience. It's by reps. Mm -hmm. It's like doing it over and over again and making the mistakes. And uh, yeah. So. Well, it's like, I mean, you, you see that play out in different contexts, too. I think Paul David Tripp has written about that. Just like, yeah. hey, you can go to, and not, and not that seminary is a bad thing. No. But you can go to seminary. Going to seminary does not necessarily make you a good pastor. No. Like you could be steeped in all this theological information, but it, it doesn't necessarily help you shepherd people well. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what that's oh. what pastoring is. And, and they don't teach you a lot of those things, right? No, like it's, it's, in seminary or or which I have not been to seminary. I've been to Bible college, uh, but in Bible college there wasn't as much practical. You know, there was a lot of theological doctrinal things, which are very important. Don't mistake what Josh and I are saying right. here. We believe that, I mean, Josh teaches a multi-year, he's part of a multi-year experience here at Radiant Life that takes people through deep and rich theological doctrinal um, truths. Uh, but you, you need, you need to kind of do some of the stuff. Like mm -hmm. you need to, you, know, you need to get into ministry. I think that's why internships are really a profound way. Uh, to grow in ministry, to bring you know young people, and we're excited. We've got a couple of interns here at Radiant Life right now. They're young kids, hungry for Jesus, mm. and it's just it's cool to see them uh, just growing. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Anything else on forty eight, Josh? Um, I just like you know to to follow up on that one that you said. He says uh, rule of thumb is we're loving to the degree that we have been loved, but mm. he gives the disclaimer because mm. you know because that could be discouraging if yes. somebody grows up in a in a place of like oh well man I yeah. was abandoned by my parents well, particularly was, the father got in by yeah I was mm -hmm. abused by my parents yeah um, they yeah. could wrestle they're like oh well I guess I don't have that capacity then mm -hmm. but he says this no family of origin is healthy enough to transform us into the kind of love we see in Jesus. And no family is dysfunctional enough to keep us from becoming mm. people of love in Jesus. All of us have the potential to grow and mature into people of agape. Uh, well, read that last sentence, though, Josh. Uh, but to do so, we have to experience the love mm -hmm. of God. So this is where it is not wholly dependent on you know family mm -hmm. of origin or anything you know the way that we grew up, mm -hmm. because you could have had the most terrible childhood. But you can still uh, learn to sit in the loving presence of God, mm. and that is mm -hmm. what will will fuel your ability and your capacity to love other people. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Cool. Uh, what about forty nine, Josh? Um, do you have anything before Benners? Benners. Uh, well. It, it, I do, but I, I know I'm recognizing I need to skip some of the things that I have highlighted because <laughs> the podcast could only be so long. Uh, but yeah, I, going into David Benner's book, I would say, we, and we talked a little bit about this on take one yesterday, uh, David Benner is some required reading for some coursework that I'm going through uh, as a spiritual director. And uh, his book, Sacred Companions, I just really believe is a book that every church leader should read. It is definitely about spiritual direction. Mm -hmm. uh, but after I read the book, I, I actually, I think I shared with you yesterday, I, I reached out to Ryan. And I said, hey, Ryan, would you pray about uh, allowing the staff to go through this book together? Uh, because I see a lot of overlap in what good spiritual direction is and what a good spiritual director does. And what a director of a ministry needs to do for for our our pipeline language mm -hmm. for their coaches, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I'm I'm excited for that. David Benner's book, Sacred uh, Sacred uh, Companions, absolute must read, phenomenal book. Uh, but he says there at the bottom, he's a psychologist and spiritual director. Um, this is David's experience on contemplation. Meditating on God's love has done more to increase my love than decades of effort to try to be more loving allowing myself to deeply experience his love taking time to soak in it and allow it to infuse me has begun to affect changes that i had given up hope of ever experiencing coming back to god in my failures at love throwing myself into his arms and asking him to remind me of how much he loves me as i am here i begin to experience new levels of love to give to lover to, to others so we 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 are loved into loving 
Mm -hmm. I just think that is a, a powerful statement. And I know that goes back to the earlier. Well, I think pages, that, that gets into, you know, from a, a very practical, from a very practical standpoint, you know, as far as practices goes, that's, you know, part yeah. of like the prayer of examine, right? Like, mm -hmm. look, and asking that question, getting to the end of the day and asking, uh, how have I experienced Unpack the Unpack the prayer of examine a little well, bit more for listeners so and viewers who don't know. I'll let you, because honestly, this is one I'm newer to like okay. actually incorporate. So, okay. because, and I, I go about it slightly differently in sure. my, like sure. I do, I do a, every day. It started as a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's morphed into after reading some stuff from Chris Corsi and, and Marcus Warner, um, it's, it's morphed into what I call an appreciation mm. journal because they say, hey, gratitude mm -hmm. is good, said, but appreciation is better. Mm -hmm. Like actually, you know, shifting the focus slightly. Um, so for me, that's part of it. But it's mm -hmm. that aspect of it is, is, all right, Lord, looking back over the course of my day, mm. you know, how have I experienced the loving presence of God? Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's trying to bring to the forefront that awareness. Again, we've, we've talked about it multiple times now, you know, on the, on the podcast. And um, kind of my my tangent is uh, the, and I didn't come up with it, but the spiritual disciplines uh, don't, in a sense, lure God in right. you know, to where like, oh, I'm going to put out this bait. They lure <laughs> us in. Right, they, right. It's not that <laughs> it's not that we do these things and then God is like, oh, you know what? You just, you fasted. I can come close. You pulled you. the lever. Right. You, you did the thing. Uh, rather, it is, uh, it's a shift in our awareness. God mm. is already present. Mm. Uh, and when we engage in these things, we can we right. can utilize them to become more aware of his already present. Yeah, uh, his active presence. Yes, yeah, he, he's yeah. there. Um, yeah. So totally. Where was I? Uh, we were talking oh, about the prayer, yeah, the prayer right. exam. So so it's 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 yeah. creating this space where mm -hmm. I just sit and I say, mm. Lord, how have I experienced your loving presence today? Yeah. And and when we take the time to do that we might get through the end of a day and maybe it was a rough day and you think, man, this day sucked. Like mm -hmm. I didn't feel God at all. Right. But if we actually create that space and our Holy spirit to kind of float to the surface, Oh no. Hey, you remember, mm -hmm. you remember this? Yeah. Oh, do you remember that moment? And it's like, Oh, you know what? Actually I can, mm. I can see God in all kinds of my day. <laughs> when you start looking for him. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the prayer of examine comes from Ignatius of Loyola. So it's an Ignatian uh, practice. Um, but what you just described is, was, is actually half of the practice. Yes. Yeah. Because the other half, like what Josh just described is definitely the prayer of examine, but it's the prayer of seeking consolation. Mm -hmm. So Ignatius would say, uh, what you're, what you did was you're looking for the consoling presence of God in your experience throughout the week. The other half of that is the desolation side mm -hmm. where you begin to say, where did I not experience the presence of God? Where was the grit, right? Where was the, the burr? Where was the sand, the grain of sand, the, the irritant? and then begin to ask the spirit why, right? And I have found that both sides of that coin, it's really powerful because yes, you do exactly what you said, that gratefulness comes to the surface. You begin to see the goodness of God in places that you wouldn't have seen him before. Um, but then you also look as like, oh, I missed the mark there. And that desolation was actually because I was actually hurt because someone made fun of me here mm -hmm. and I took it out on this person over here. Mm -hmm. And you begin to connect the dots in the desolation side uh, to our sinful nature. Exam the prayer of examine, which is contemplation, is a powerful practice, very powerful. And it can be just as simple as Josh uh, described. We would tell you, you know, as you're developing a rule of life, um, that's a that's a beautiful practice. And, and Josh and I would look at book ending too, like mm. starting our day and ending our day with examine. Um, uh, and, and Ignatius of Loyola would talk about the five offices um, and many contemporary monastic people would simplify that to three. Mm. Pete, Pete Scazzaro is a contemporary monastic person who would simplify that to morning, noon, and then e e uh, night, the compline. Um, so yeah, it's great, great practices. Um, uh, middle of 50 there. Contemplative prayer isn't looking to get anything from God. It's just looking at God. I look at him, he looks at me, and we are happy. That's that's coming back to the 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 lever biscuit kind of thing, you know. That's not what any of these things are about, mm -hmm. you know. Um, 
it, it's it's about actually experiencing the presence of God, which is mm-hmm. what we long for. Mm-hmm. Truly, in in our inner persons, we really do want to experience God's presence. Um, but there are tried and true ways to do so. And but he gets into as we yeah, continue about on that. fifty, he gets into some of the challenges. Oh yeah, he says you know that that second to last paragraph, mm. last sentence. It requires the very capacity of which our world schemes to rob me attention. Mm. And then that last sentence of the last paragraph, if we can't pay attention, we can't pray. Mm. Right? So, Talk I mean, about that so, more, So Josh. doing these things, right? I mean, uh, let's go to the, just that, that prayer of examine. Mm-hmm. I mean, this does require me to, to create a space mm-hmm. where I can, I, in a sense, I, I quiet my, my spirit. I quiet mm-hmm. and I, I create the space where I can actually pay attention yeah. to the things that Holy Spirit wants to bring to the surface. Mm-hmm. But if I'm, and there's a, a where, where's that now in quote? Is that in the next page? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the now in quote okay, does. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's something that we do have to show up for. Yeah. You know, and we have to, you know, try mm-hmm. to, to limit or eliminate mm-hmm. some of the distractions around us. And when you, um, when you first enter into contemplation or meditative prayer, there is the, the, chaos the cacophony mm-hmm. of your thoughts that just swirls i was talking to chad about this last night literally um and sometimes that requires waiting but there there are some things that you can do um to help you get into cont- contemplative prayer or meditative prayer and and that's by centering prayer mm-hmm. so some people will have key phrases or words that mm-hmm. help them kind of i would say <laughs> you know like <laughs> whoa whoa D- don't think about you know the fact that you messed up the audio on the podcast yesterday today's a new day there's no time That's machine right let's go right let's figure this out um and so and for me the jesus prayer has been a very powerful uh centering prayer that kind of does exactly what it says it centers me back into my attention toward god mm. it, it helps me focus my attention on god and it starts to sort of silence those voices mm. And some of us, I think, have a more powerful inner voice or a more powerful array of voices that are that are hitting us. And so time also is a way to get uh, into that contemplative or meditative state. Um, do and I know I'm do, sounding mystical here. No, which is which all right. The next page gets into right. some But warnings. do you do any sort of like a, like a, a journal, like, hey, as I'm trying to enter into these spaces, mm-hmm. I have a notebook right here. Is these thoughts are bombarding me. Oh, you know what? Yes. Because for me, sometimes the thoughts get racist. Like, oh, hey, don't forget to. Mm-hmm. And now I'm I'm totally yep. distracted because I I don't want to forget this thing. And to mm-hmm. not forget it, I have to keep it at the forefront of my brain. Yes. Right. And this is now consuming all of my attention. It has to be Versus, evacuated. You know. Oh, hey, I'm going to write this down. Yes. You know, pick up milk. Josh, that's been now my practice for it's, years. It's written down. I don't. I don't have to. I, I can say. Yep. Oh. Psh. Yep. Let's just shift that thing to the side because I've I've written it down. I don't have to worry about forgetting it because mm-hmm. it's literally right here. Yeah, and so. most of us, I think, Josh, you and I included, a great amount of our lives is centered around this device because it has a calendar on it, right? So we would say to each other, if it's not in this calendar, it's probably not going to happen. Like it's not a real thing; it doesn't <laughs> yep. exist. And so, but I don't want to bring my phone mm-hmm. into the into my space with Jesus. Uh, the phone is a no because it's an attention demanding thing. It demands my attention always. This is one of the reasons why I'm a I'm a huge proponent of a. a and I know again we engage. We'll probably hit on this in a little bit. Mm-hmm. We engage with with scripture differently. Some people you utilize yeah. you know maybe audio or through sure. the Bible app something like that. As much as possible, I'm a proponent of a, a paper Bible. Me too. Um, yep. Yep. Because it doesn't it. My phone's not going to ding. I'm going to get zero alerts. I'm going to get zero notifications. Yep. I can't even have the phone in the same room with me. It's mm-hmm. not even on the same floor. <laughs> like it's on the top floor of our house and it sits on a, 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 I call it my, it goes to bed at night and it sits on this, <laughs> this, it's a, a mag safe charger and it just sits there a certain time every night. I put it on there and I don't get it out until I'm done with that time with the Lord. But I do the exact same thing. I've got a notebook there with a pen. Um, because I do need to be responsible mm-hmm. and like that thing that's coming to my mind is important. It is important. And if I don't write it down or if I don't ultimately, cause what I do when I'm done is I will Plug go back upstairs. Yeah. Yes. I come back downstairs. I've got a whole thing and I bring my phone with me and I, I begin to transfer what I wrote down in the notebook 
to the phone. Mm -hmm. And then I cross those things out in the notebook. I close it and I go about my day. Even, even my daily readings are for the following day are then written in that notebook. So then in the morning, I don't have to reference anything digital. It's there. The plan is there. I see it. I know what I'm reading. Um, unless the Lord leads me in another place, but, um, yeah, no, that's good. Attention. So, that's why attention, we were talking about. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. so there are, there are things that we can do yeah. to, uh, choose to be and work to be more present mm -hmm. in those moments of yeah. working towards that more contemplative posture. Mm -hmm. so. And if some of you listening like me, you know, you grew up maybe in a more con uh, conservative, we'll call it American evangelical uh, faith experience. When you start hearing people talk about monasticism, mysticism, contemplative prayer, meditation, your, your hackles might go up a little throw bit. the flag and say yeah. new age. Yes. New age. <laughs> that's occultic. Yes. There are def Those words are shared among other faith practices and are very dark. And, and I think it's important for us to read. That's the one of the last paragraphs on page 51. Um, so this is where contemplative prayer veers in an entirely different direction from mindfulness, or we'll say uh, just meditation. And other more popular, another more popular types of meditation. For example, in Buddhist meditation, the goal is to empty the self. Prayer involves a similar emptying, but its goal is to make room for a filling of God. In mindfulness, the goal is simply to be present in the moment. In prayer, it's to be present to God's presence in the moment and ultimately presence to his love. And the way we described it yesterday, I felt like it was a good way to talk about it, Josh, was... Um, meditation or contemplative practices that are not centered around the person of Jesus uh, are pushing you towards inactivity mm. or an emptying. Mm -hmm. Meditative and contemplative prayer practices focused on the person of Jesus are active. Mm. They actually are, you're, you're conscious of him mm -hmm. and thinking about him. So there's, that's the big difference. So even if God isn't leading you, listener or viewer, to a practice like this, be open. Just seek the Lord. God loves you. He's not going to allow you to be taken down some dark path. He, he, he's going to protect you. Well, and so on 52, he, yep. he defines, he says, all, all I mean by mystic is a disciple of Jesus who wants to experience spiritually mm. what is true of them theologically. Mm. Right. And, and this is moving beyond kind of, you know, you talked about it earlier, like moving beyond just that information, mm -hmm. you know, um, and actually being in the place of, well, no, this is, this is real. Do like the this stuff. Is, this is tangible. Mm -hmm. This is this is not just something that I, I mm -hmm. know about. It is something that we've experienced. Well, that middle that middle uh, paragraph there. Um, mystics are just those who aren't content to read books or hear sermons about this glorious reality. They want to experience this love and be transformed by it into people of love. Um, and we would say that to you, listeners, viewers, um, don't just listen to Radiant Reflections. Don't just read Practicing the Way. Don't just go to church, right? The goal is for you to develop a life with Jesus that is between you and him that causes you to be more like him and to love people. And that may include some mystic defined practices. It might, but it might not either. You know, it might include liturgy, but it might not. It might include speaking in an unknown language, mm. the gift of tongues, or it might not. Uh, the important thing is to be open to how God wants to meet with you through the, the presence of his spirit and through the person of Jesus. Um, that that's what's important. Josh, we did this yesterday. Perfectly the same is this thing. Where we, yeah. Yeah. Where we yeah. Cut off? Um, I, I just want to, I want to end with a little bit of a challenge because okay. maybe, you know, maybe you guys, it, are like, you guys are, you guys are crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. I would be really curious. Have you, have you gone to a class, read books? And mm -hmm. as a result of that, you genuinely, truly loved people more. <laughs> I mean, may, I, I, mean maybe, I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's out there, right? You know, and we want to be open to the fact that right. you know, we don't have all the answers. I would say the answer <laughs> to that challenge, Josh, is yes, but to what quantitative degree? Well, and, right? and, and to what extent was it, hey, like I read this book and then I created space to allow Holy Spirit to show me, right? you know, right. I could, I could read a book and become aware of, oh my goodness, this highlights yeah. areas in which I am unloving mm. to people. Mm -hmm. But ultimately then is it just me like, 
grabbing mm-hmm. my bootstraps and saying, all right, I'm mm-hmm. going to go out and I'm going to love people better today. And that's not um, an agent of change. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, so I'm just be yeah. curious to get uh, our yeah. viewers and listeners thoughts on that. Like, yeah. what are the things that have uh, created shifts in you to where, you know, mm. like, man, as a result of these things, I have genuinely not just, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to put up with this person, right. but genuinely love other people more. And, and I think the, the real uh, qualifier for that or the barometer is your awareness that it isn't you. Mm. Like when, when God does a work in your life, uh, it is so overwhelmingly, uh, it's so overwhelmingly in your consciousness. It's like, oh my gosh, this is miraculous. Like that is not who I actually am. Like I am not that person. And God did something crazy in me. Uh, wow. I just love to see the presence of God in my life. Cause it's all him. <laughs> it's like, this, I didn't pull myself up by my bootstraps. I don't have any straps on or any boots like that. Even I just, I'm like another, uh, I don't know. Uh, it, we just want to continue to encourage you, listener, viewer, uh, the goal of season four of Radiant Reflections and going through Practicing the Way is for you to begin to develop a rule of life on your own. And right now we're talking so about that. A, yeah. Be, they can increase that awareness of the love yes. of God for them and overflow that is, yes. is love to other people. Yeah. And actually bear kingdom fruit, right? Uh, blessed are those. That That's where we're looking. We're looking at the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are those who, blessed are those who, blessed are those who are doing certain things by the power of the spirit. Mm. Um, as always, we want to say like, share, subscribe, push this out. Would you send this out? Um, uh, write a review, follow us on Spotify, write a review on Apple music on YouTube music. You can like this, uh, on YouTube. You can share these videos. The more that you share the videos, the more you share the audio uh, on my app. I've got this cool thing where I can just literally text a link mm. to the podcast I'm listening to. And Josh knows that I, I, I you, you utilize that feature. I often. do. <laughs> I, I, I slam the staff, uh, text thread with, with podcast links. And I think they just, I, I think it's just like a uh, Charlie Brown's teacher at this point. <laughs> JB and all the podcast, blah, blah. <laughs> but I do love that. And so I want to encourage you to do that thing. Maybe somebody came to your heart and mind while you were listening or watching this podcast and you think they could benefit by uh, what we have shared. And of course, what John Mark Comer has written. Um, yeah. Get out, get a copy of the book. Keep reading with us. God bless you. And we'll, we'll see you in just a few minutes right. as we reshoot. Episode but that's a eight. week in your time. Yes. <laughs>